Okay, welcome everybody. We're doing a new data talks this time. We're doing a little bit of a different format. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll both introduce ourselves a little bit and then we'll talk about what's gonna be different about this data talks. Uh, so you know me, I'm, I'm Nate, it's kind of the host of, all, of a lot of these things before. I teach lots of data science and I also do data science as a full-time job. And then we have with us today, Seth, who's quite similar. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so I'm Seth. Uh, I actually teach data science full time, um, which is a little different than Nate. But other than that, we're pretty similar. Uh, I did data science before teaching it, but now uh, I work for this company, Metis, and we teach companies data science. Uh, Metis also does data science boot camps. If you've heard of them, you may have heard of that. But I work on this team that does uh, that teaches data science to companies. So enjoy that. But uh, and I met Nate at ODSC West last year in November. It's true. It is true. Um, <laughs> we just met and I don't know, we just started chatting. We both taught at General Assembly previous yeah. part-time courses. Yeah. And yeah. Nate was doing a whole bunch of teaching stuff. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've always wanted to do like teaching full-time. It's just, I can, I can never convince myself to just do it. Um, because as always, teachers are underpaid and underloved. Yeah, man. Well, since we're pouring out our hearts here, maybe by the end of the <laughs> by the end of this year, convince Nate to give up his career as a data scientist and become a teacher. I, um, I, that's that's the long term ambition, you know. Nice. Like, well, yeah. I, I don't I don't know if that's similar for you, but you know, I definitely you know once once I hit the peak old age of forty, want to retire and just yeah. teach data. Well, science. Don't we all? I think, um, yeah, man. Um, and once you retire, you'll become a teacher. That's that's. I mean, I think that's the hope. Just a, just a teacher and yeah. spend spend more time writing and less time making YouTube videos. <laughs> Who knows, man? Maybe there'll be an AR YouTube by then. And oh, that would be. It'll be super, make super interactive. Oh man, we could we could really get into the three D plots. Yeah, we could do data <laughs> like touch, sense, and smell. Not just data talks. You know, we could do everything. I, yeah, that's. What I've always wondered how to add in four dimensions. You just, you just right. smell the particular parts of the data, and you're like, Oh yeah, oh, oh so that's smell that's that data. data. <laughs> right here. <laughs> you know, uh, it's April Fool's Day. That's a bit of context for everyone. It's oh, April first, oh, 2018. Oh man, that's that's terrible. So the one of, one of the sad things is that I I take a very long time to edit these videos after I record them. <laughs> now everyone's gonna know that I took like a month to go ahead and edit this video. So yeah, yeah. Thanks, Seth. Hmm. Yep, yep, totally. It's actually like February first. I lied. Yeah. Um, oh no 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 no! It's February twenty ninth. It just takes forever, man. No, um, no. It's amazing that that. I mean, we started talking and I, and like, it's amazing that he puts all these YouTube videos online. Like he does this in his spare time on top of doing like two or three other things. And so I'm always super happy to support that kind of thing. Um, so it's really great. Speaking of supporting, what are we going to be talking about today? Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about GANs. This is a topic that many of you may have heard of. You may have tried to learn more about it seen some tutorials, read some blog posts, or you've just seen like the images that they're generating, or you, you just might be curious about, about learning more. And um, I really actually, 18 months ago, I was just learning about deep learning and didn't know much about it. Yeah. Over the last 18 months, it's become like an obsession. And I've tried to learn everything I can and implement stuff from scratch. And so I really love like taking these complicated deep learning concepts and trying to make them a little more accessible. So that's what we're going to do today with GANs. We're going to try. Yeah. What, what's been, what's, what have been your, I'm actually curious myself. Yeah. What, what, what are your favorite deep learning resources to like learn from? Um, well, that's a great question. I think to be honest, when I was learning, I think there's so many blog posts out there that are sort of at a high level yeah. that I, I basically think you can read all you want, but at the end of the day, you have to implement at least some stuff from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. You have to get into the weeds and like really understand what's going on at a low level and then implement things from scratch. Yeah. That was really, when I implemented like my first just really basic neural net from scratch, that's when things really started to click. Yeah. Um, in terms of like resources, I think um, the Udacity Deep Learning mm -hmm. program is really good. And in particular, you know, you can go through their program and get access to their videos and all that stuff. 
Um, they also have all the material, not maybe with, ex with solutions, but they have a lot of their notebooks from the nano degree just on, just on GitHub. Huh. Okay. And like you can start there and go from the start of their curriculum and go through these notebooks and like learn a good bit that way. Um, yeah. I don't know. How about you for deep learning? Uh, I, I don't. I, so yeah, man, I, I started getting back, getting this or getting into this back at Google actually hmm. when I was there. And uh, yeah, so there was this thing in San Francisco that was awesome. Um, so the, you know, deep learning book. So the, the good fellow and yeah, the good fellow book. So that's, that's really good. Um, I, I totally recommend it. It's, it's super, it's a little bit mathy. Yeah. <laughs> I can say that, but whatever. So they did both good fellow and um, uh, Jeremy Howard did presentations of the book in San Francisco, um, which great. was awesome. Yeah, it was yeah. very cool. Um, and so going in and watching those and, you know, I can actually post a link to some of those videos down below. It's pretty nice. soon. In addition, I'll, I'll just, this is a small plug. I've read, I've, I've read a lot of papers myself and I've sort of posted yeah. uh, some notes and stuff like that from those papers. So if you're really interested in, you know, staying, and I, I do mostly vision stuff these days, but if you're interested in staying like state of the art, you can, you can, it's a GitHub repo and you can follow that. So I'll, I'll include that. We'll as post well. links to all this stuff for yes. sure. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. yes. Just um, after one, one month of editing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for, I think, some uh, some blog posts on like the basics of, of neural nets and how they work, oh, yeah. I've written some stuff that I can share. And I also think probably the other best stuff is Andre Karpathy's yeah. blog posts on, uh, like he taught a class Stanford at Stanford called CS231 that's really famous. If you haven't heard of that, go check that out. Um, and we'll post links to like the most relevant materials from that course if you're just getting started. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to post a lot of links today. We'll just send you all the info. Um, but seriously, it's kind of interesting. It's hard to learn things in this age of the internet. And yes. so sort of why we do this is like, we want, we don't want you to like stumble as much as we did, I guess. Right. <laughs> to, to suffer as much as, <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, suffering's maybe a little strong, but um, <laughs> to, to be, to be frustrated. And like, oh, what's, what's really going on? Um, all right. So let's try to demystify GANs a little bit. Please. So, so the format's going to be, Seth is going to be sort of taking us away and I'm going to act as I, as I truly am as sort of like the uh, sort of young, you know, bright eyed, you know, asking questions and stuff like yeah. that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'll please, you know, Nate, like jump and ask as many questions as you want. The context for this is I gave this talk at a deep learning meetup in Boston mm -hmm. about a, a couple months ago now. Yeah. And I'm giving a hopefully beefed up version of this talk at ODSC East in Sweet. a month or so. So like, this is meant for, I guess, a little more advanced audience, but I do go over some basics at the beginning, which is what we're going to do today. Great. And so, like, hopefully, I, I don't want to confuse anybody. All right. So, we've got our Jupyter Notebook here. So, today, at least, we'll go over an intro to GANs, what are they, what motivated their creation, and then just go over how they work. Like, what's actually going on in a GAN? Like, okay, they can generate images. You may have seen that. How do they do that? Um, some of the more advanced stuff from today, we are considering doing a part two mm -hmm. of this because I think this stuff at the beginning to really go over it in detail will take a little bit of time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look for that. All right, Just to get my HTML for running right. All right, so what is a GAN? So GAN stands for Generative Adversarial Network. Mm. What does that mean? They're a method of training neural networks We'll talk about that and give you a mental model for that if you're a begin if you're still learning this stuff. They're a method of training neural networks not to predict things but to generate images. They can also generate other things, but they're mostly used to generate images similar to those in the data the neural network is trained on. So if you give a neural network, say a bunch of digit handwritten digits, as is the classic machine learning problem, it can generate images similar to those mm -hmm. digits. And this is done by an adversarial process, hence adversarial. All right. So, so, so yes. So, I mean, I'm I'm new to machine learning, and I've heard of you know discriminative machine learning as well as generative machine learning. Mm -hmm. you know, is is a is a GAN an example of like generative machine learning? How does it fit into that sort of paradigm? Yeah. So, 
What a GAN really is, mm -hmm. is you train two neural networks to sort of compete with each other. Yeah. And the result is you actually end up with two results. You get one neural network that we hope is really good at generating things, mm -hmm. generating images. Mm -hmm. And we get another neural network though, that is that we call the discriminator, that's good at telling whether an image is real or fake. Mm -hmm. And so we'll get into what all that means and how it actually works. Cause I think you can see lots of tutorials out there like GANs can generate images, look at these cool images they can generate. But the pur purpose of this is to get into like, okay, what's actually going on? Um, all right, so a basic example of what GANs can do, they can generate digits like we talked about. And just so you know sort of what the state of the art is, as of October 2017, there is a big result published by researchers actually out of NVIDIA. Mm. Uh, they called their method progressive growing of GANs. Don't worry about too much about what that means. But essentially, they generated really large, which is harder to do, so 1,024 pixels by 1,024 pixels, photorealistic images of faces. And uh, this image right here of these two people, first of all, it's mind blowing to think these are not people that exist in the world. Yeah. Like 7 billion people in the world, these two are not one of them. Mm. These are made up by a computer. Um, and this was also, this result was written up in the New York Times. So GANs are starting to get some like yeah. mainstream attention with Very these photorealistic so. results, yeah. The, um, um, there's, there's, yeah. A, there's a cool paper that I read recently that was, it was about this, this paper itself. And you know, the question was, how many unique faces can it generate? Right. right? right. Um, I can link that paper below, but the, the answer is 60,000. <laughs> Which, so here's a question. Does that, well, you know, how many unique faces are there? That's fascinating, <laughs> right. I don't know. Why 60, that's, that is, that's such a cool result. It's, and, it's really um, cool. You should, uh, you can, I'll, I'll post the paper down below. Um, it's, yeah, but, but it's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. Uh, but I don't know, it, but it's a good question. Are there more than 60,000 unique human faces? Probably. I mean, I think, <laughs> yes, there are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. The profound questions of life we're getting into here. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll have to do at least, we'll have to do another GAN data talk on that. And also, oh, yeah. if you can think of a really clever name for like GAN data talk, something that combines, you know, GAN and data talk, post it in the comments. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah. cool. And uh, there's this famous quote from uh, Jan LeCun, the director of AI research at Facebook, who said in a Quora, uh, ask me anything thing and I guess Quora just Q&A session in 2016 He said GANs and the variations that are now being proposed are the most interesting idea in the last 10 years in machine learning in my opinion mm. All right So What are GANs? Well, they're a type of neural network. So just let's go over like the, what we need to know about what are neural networks mm. So if you go online as I did again 18 24 months ago and tried to learn what are neural networks you'll see lots of diagrams like this. There's arrows and circles and arrows connecting the circles and things called hidden layers. It's like, okay, fine, but that, that really tells me nothing. Um, so we could spend a whole day to talk just talking about what are neural networks, but I'll try to give you like a really high level overview. So mathematically, neural networks are, they're universal function approximators. All right, so what does that mean? That means they can take in, they're just a function that takes in any input and forgetting about what happens in the middle. Mm -hmm. If you have any relationship between input and output, it can approximate that. Mm -hmm. so let's say there's some really complicated relationship between the individual pixels of an image and whether it is a face or not, mm -hmm. or whether it is a zero, a one, a two, or three, or all the way up to a nine. In theory, a sufficiently large and complicated neural network can approximate that perfectly. Um, then, so going one level deeper, what are they? They're nested functions. So that means what happens is, if you think about like a mathematical function, okay, we're getting a little mathy here. We take our input and that input becomes, and we, so what is a nested function? We start with input. You feed it through a function and it becomes the input, that output becomes the input to another function. And the output of that becomes the input to another function. The output of that becomes the input to another function, et cetera. So 
there are these universal function, function approximators, but inside they have this structure of like a bunch of little functions that are passing data through. Again, we could go into the details there, and I yeah. did in a in actually the talk where I at the conference I met Nate at. But um, for now, is that is that good? Do you have any questions so far, Nate? Oh, it's so know, many. It's, it's so 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 many. It's neural yeah. networks are like onions. They have yeah, like, they really are. That's a great way of saying it. Yeah, they also yeah. like well. I'll, I'll hold off on that thought for now. Sure, um, sure, sure. Yeah, there's so yeah. much we could say here, but- you know, Right, there is, there is, there is. We, we, gotta, we gotta get to the GANs. Exactly, we gotta get to the GANs. The, right, um, all right. The other thing to know is that each one of these functions is differentiable. Mm -hmm. Each one of these little intermediate functions is differentiable. So what does that mean? That means that if I take the output of one of those functions and I say, you know what? I want the output to be a little bit higher. So I, I, I can figure out mathematically how much I need to ch change the input or stuff happening inside the function in order to make the output a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. So each one of these little steps we do inside a neural network is relatively simple and sort of smooth. It's doing like a, a transformation we can handle. Yeah. 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 So it's not some magic complicated thing. It's like a series of steps, each one of which is sort of smooth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing to know is neural networks have all these weights floating around. So I think actually a decent model to think of a neural network is like, I did this in a slide one time. Think of input going in and think of just a big circle with a bunch of little Ws floating around. Think of a neural network with just a bunch of, it has a bunch of these weights. Yeah. And here's the thing that's actually really important. Because neural networks are differentiable, each one of those weights you can calculate mathematically, and libraries do this for you, but you can calculate mathematically, if I increase one of these weights by a little bit, is my output, the thing that the neural network outputs, going to increase or decrease? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can do that for every single weight. Mm -hmm. And the result is that you can then train these neural networks. You can, at each iteration, you can feed input through, you can get output out, and then you can figure out, okay, well, our output was this, but we wanted it to be this. Mm -hmm. How much do we need to change our weights in order to get the output to be better? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's key. And that means we can, and a way of saying that mathematically, I don't want to scare anyone, is that we can compute, let's say that difference between what our neural network outputted and what we wanted it to output, we call that L for loss. So loss, bad. We want zero loss. Oh, um, yeah. oh, we lost, terrible. Yeah. It's just called loss. You know, what else do you really need to know? Yeah, you um, don't want to lose. No, you don't want to, no, you don't want to lose. Yeah. Um, I don't want to lose. Um, but you have loss. What does that, so what does this whole differentiable thing mean? What is this all leading up to? We can compute for each weight the partial derivative of the loss with respect to that weight. Mm -hmm. And this is just shorthand for the partial derivative of the loss with respect to all the weights. Yep. Yep. All right. And that's how you train neural networks. So. Right. Wait, 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 how do I, okay. How do I, I get it. I get the, the, yes. the I can, I can take that derivative, but then what do I do with it? What do you do with it? You use that to update all the weights. Got it so that the loss will be reduced on the next iteration. Got it, got it, got it. Got if it. neural nets weren't differentiable, if, if any of these things we said weren't true, mm -hmm. if they weren't differentiable, we couldn't compute this quantity. Yep. If they weren't nested functions, then we wouldn't, it would be really, really, really hard to compute that quantity. Sure. And if they weren't universal function approximators, we wouldn't care about them at all. Well, yeah. So, yeah. 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 The, I guess... That that last statement's a little extreme. The yeah, one of, what one of the ways I like to think about it is that the so the universal approximator paper it proved that the neural networks could be universal function approximators as long as you a single layer neural network could be a universal function approximator because yes. it can act like a dictionary, right? Oh. And, so, <laughs> and that's that's basically all it meant. It was like. Um, uh, so, so it was like, you know, you give me an input as long as I've got 
you know, a number of, of weights and stuff like that equal to the size of the output. I right. can act like a little dictionary and be like, well, you gave me this input, so it should map to mm. this output. Exactly. Um, the nice thing about, uh, and, so, and so that means that you've got to have like a really big wide neural network. Right. But the nice thing about instead, so instead of having this massive wide neural network, you can stack the layers on top of each other. And when you, and when you stack them on top of each other, yes. they kind of like, it, it kind of, instead, I guess, instead of, you know, growing linearly, if you just increase the width, it kind of like grows exponentially is, mm -hmm. is, is the way that I've heard it before. And so yeah. you get like all sorts of ways that you can combine them and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you know, um, yeah, true. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll maybe give a better explanation no, no, after. No, I think, I think there are a million ways to explain this. Oh my God, yes. You, you, so since, since we can edit this, um, my, <laughs> favorite, my favorite explanation is, or like I think an onion is a great way of thinking of it. Yeah. I think of it as like, when I was learning this stuff, I remember you'd read about neural nets or computational graphs, and sure. then you could see neural nets or functions and, neural, and all these things. I think of it kind of like the three blind mice trying to uh, understand the elephant. Like you sort of have to learn, okay, you can think of neural nets as a computational graph. You can think of them as mathematical functions, but really they're sort of all these uh, different, yeah. like none of those is sufficient to fully understand them. Um, so 100, I mean, it's, yeah. And, and if you read this, this guy, we're going to go to his picture in one second. If you read his book, um, the, the Ian Goodfellow, just like down there. Let's, yes. Let's look at his beautiful face. So if you, if you read his book, he also, like a lot of people like to explain them in terms of like Bayesian uh, statistics and stuff like that, yeah. which is a little bit, it's a little bit harder to understand for me, you know, the, the layout, but, but yeah, yeah, there's so many different ways of viewing them. Yeah. Yeah. And um, for those people watching, like this stuff is, took me a long time to really understand. Um, so it's, it is just hard. So if you're confused, you're not alone. Yeah. Um, ask questions in the comments and we'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I was also thinking like I did for ODSC what, like the one, the conference we met at, I did put together like a just line by line yeah. a example of, um, you know, a deep learning neural network from scratch in Python. So that might be a fun one to do. Oh, like with NumPy and stuff like that. Not just NumPy. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. From, Using NumPy, yep. That's like awesome. Step by step. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that so, could be so that, that, that'd be a good one to do. All right. So if we're editing this, we can cut in now. <laughs> so. No, no need, no need to edit any of this. This is all cool. good. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, like, I certainly enjoy this stuff. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So differentiability. Yep. <laughs> um, what does that mean? Well, this is, a, this is a cool little thing that makes GANs work. Yeah. So we said we can figure out how much changing each of those weights changes the loss, mm -hmm. right? But because neural nets are differentiable, and this is why we are happy, we we're building up to this the way we were, we can also figure out if I change the input to the neural net yeah. by a little bit, if I change this pixel in an image, how much will that change the loss? Exactly. So yeah. that's what that's another thing differentiability gives us, and this turns out to be a key thing that that makes GANs work. And it's super crucial in uh, adversarial examples if you've heard them or yes. heard about them as well. Yes, yes, exactly. That I will file that away, and we will talk about adversarial examples for sure. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I so yeah. There's this is a, this is another tangent. There's so many yeah. good. It's always one of those things. There's so many good resources out there. Yeah, for for machine learning, it's kind of. It's one of those, like, is it worth, you know, getting into it or not? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Hands and adversarial examples. Yeah. I don't think there's super good resources out there right now. So Yeah, um, probably just like the original papers. Um, exactly. Yeah, and some yeah. blogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing it's interesting. Before. This is definitely a tangent, but like, if you think about TensorFlow, Keras, there yeah. are a million tutorials on how to do Very every, good. like, classification problem under the sun. I don't know if there's, like, out-of-the-box code in those libraries that lets you generate adversarial examples, which is interesting. I don't know any. Yeah, like it's sort of interesting. You'd think that that would be something that would be in there, but it's not, right? Yeah, I, 
I, I don't, I don't know any. Um, Maybe like that's too dangerous. Like they don't want to give you a library that can generate adversarial examples. Yeah. But then again, I guess for an adversarial example, you have to have like, I guess a class that you want it to generate an adversarial example for. Yeah. And a pr like, like a pre-trained network. Almost. Yeah. 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 You, would, you would need the network to be pre-trained and then you just, I mean, yeah. trained to get the images. The, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of interesting. We'll, I'll, I'll link the paper. Uh, there's, there's also a really good paper published, I believe by Goodfellow as well. Don't, don't quote me on that recently on human adversarial examples. I don't know if you saw that. I did see that. Oh, yeah. God, it's so cool. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I, so you, you should just, I, I'll include the link. Just go to that, that the first page there and it shows a, a cat that they permuted just a little bit the image so that humans think it looks like a dog, which is yeah. awesome. It's like, wow, they're hacking your mind quite literally. Right, 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 right. So. I saw that result and then like skimmed the paper and I was honestly a little bit skeptical. Like they had one really cool visual headline example. I was like, but can, is this a robust thing where you can generate, you can take an image of a cat and make it look like an airplane? Like, I don't know. That, I think, yeah, so it, the, I don't know, is, but it, so if you look at them, the actual yeah. images in the back, the, the cabbage to, to spider thing, you can tell it's cabbage, but supposedly if you flash it in front of your face for just like an instant, like some people will be a little bit more confused. The, um, and, hmm. it's kind of, and this is, this is something that Andrew Ng said that is, that I think it's kind of interesting. You know, he thinks that all tasks that humans can do in under a second, neural networks will be able to do just as well or better that's um, actually very interesting yeah right like it's a there's an interesting question of what can neural what will neural networks be able to do better than exactly. humans that's a good framework like under yeah. A second. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i, I liked it a lot hmm. I'll, I'll stop asking questions for a bit this is I, <laughs> much fun. yeah no i mean if p maybe this will get like the most views ever and we'll just <laughs> All right, let's let's go into why why GANs were invented. I think this is where um, even some of you that might know what GANs are will find this really interesting. Mm. Um, so who invented them? This guy, Ian Goodfellow. <laughs> so what's the story? Well, Ian Goodfellow in 2013 was a grad student at the University of Montreal, and he was studying under Joshua Bengio, who's one of the leading neural net researchers of all time. Uh, Still the only one, I believe, who is not officially affiliated with either Facebook or Google. <laughs> yeah. Um, though Andrew Ng is no longer. Sure. Right? But yeah, yeah Joshua Bengio is still at the University of Montreal um, full time. So they were going to run a speech synthesis contest. They were going to run a contest where people would try to generate speech that sounded human, and they would have a neural network determine whether it was human or not. The neural network would be trained on lots of fake speech and lots of real speech. But then they decided not to run the contest because they concluded that, well, people will just game the system. They'll just generate, they'll just get really good at generating speech that doesn't sound human at all, but it can fool this particular network, an early idea of adversarial examples. Mm. Um, but then Ian Goodfellow had the following insight. What if this could be fixed by the discriminator network continually, continually learning? So instead of just having a fixed network where you try to, that you continually try to fool, what if this network got smarter as well? That was the idea that, that prompted him to invent GANs. Was he really in a bar? When he well, that? this is what he, this is what the story he tells. He was in a bar one night <laughs> and then he went home and coded up the first version of GANs. And go. further down here, I'll give you a cool, um, like the punchline. This is the original code that Ian Goodfellow committed to GitHub on May 28th, 2014. Yeah. It was the first GANs ever where he generated MNIST digits. Um, very cool. Yeah. So this link is in the notebook. Yeah, check it out. I feel That's like that code should be in a museum. Yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. All right. So how do GANs work? All right. So what's our goal with GANs? We want to train a neural network that can generate good images. Good being measured by it can fool another neural network that 
is learning to produce to distinguish between real and fake images. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go through step by step what's going on. So the goal of this generator network is to take in actually a random noise vector, um, meaning just any old vector, mm -hmm. and do some deconvolution operations to it and end up with a 28 by 28 pixel image, which at the beginning will just be random noise. It'll look like this. Mm -hmm. And if this, let's denote this matrix here, X. All right, then what do you do? Well, then you take this X and you feed it through this another neural network, the discriminator network. And this neural network makes a prediction. And this prediction, you, you, we compare it to the actual value of zero. Mm. The cool thing about neural networks is we get to tell them what the right answer is. So we tell this discriminator network, you got a fake image and the right answer is zero. Mm -hmm. So then when computing the loss, we make the discriminator network, we, we say, hey, every time you see a fake image from now on, make sure you output closer to zero. Mm. And we adjust the weights to make that happen. Not only do we do that, we also figure out this, the partial derivative of the loss with respect to each of these pixels. Mm -hmm. And then we use the inverse of this loss to train the generator. Mm. Why is that? Well, what is the generator gonna output? The generator's outputting an image and the discriminator's then saying either this is a fake image or a real image. Well, the loss is going to be the difference between what the discriminator predicts and zero. So the discriminator wants that loss to be really low, but the generator wants that loss to be really high. The generator wants the discriminator to output actually a really big number. Mm -hmm. It wants it to be fooled and think yeah. that the image is real. So we feed the negative of this loss back through the generator to train the generator. Yeah. And there's actually different ways of doing this. Mm -hmm. um, like. I realize now I'm talking a little bit like I'm talking to a class. This is yeah. kind of, yeah, but um, there's actually different ways of doing this. So one way is to do what I just talked about, negative partial loss with respect to partial X, and this totally works, this is legit. Another way, which actually is done in the example we're gonna go over below, and just to show you there's multiple ways, of, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. Mm -hmm. Think about what the, loss is going to be here. It's going to be something like, let's say this discriminator network outputs 0.2. Like I've got a, I believe there's a 0.2 chance of this image being real. Mm -hmm. Well, the actual value is zero. So mm -hmm. we have a loss of something like 0.2. Another way to do it is to feed one minus the loss back through the generator. Mm -hmm. So if the discriminator outputted 0.2, 0.2 probability of being real, you'd say, well, we're gonna feed 0.8 back through the generator. Mm -hmm. And the goal would be the generator wants that to be as low as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's considered like the generator loss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whichever way helps you to think about it, uh, either way works. But the real point is the generator wants the discriminator to think the image is real. And yep. we can use the differentiability of neural networks to adjust the weights in the generator to make that happen. Sweet. Why, why do we, why do we need a noise vector? What's, what's that for? Yeah. Um, good question. Well, we've got to generate from something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and why not a noise vector? Um, <laughs> no, there's, there's, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of magic or rules of thumb when it comes to neural networks that have been arrived at through lots of practice or, starting with a result that worked and modifying it slightly. Yeah. By convention, no, there's no rhyme or reason. Uh, there's no theoretical reason, I should say. Mm -hmm. a, vector, a, a vector initialized between negative one and one yeah. of dimension 100 is typically what you feed into a generator network. Yeah. The idea is the generator network should be able to transform any sort of random data yeah. into an image that looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, and when, 
And you see this, you know, with um, Apple produced a paper, which was, you know, the, this was one of the, what was it? It was one of the best papers at iClear or something like that. Yeah. Where was it? I, I forget. It won I a best remember. paper award at some, at some conference. And uh, what they did is they fed a simulated image in. It's kind of like, it's kind of, it's kind of like, I don't know. So they, they feed a simulated image in. They want to uh, make a generator that takes a simulated image wow. and turn it into something that looks real. Uh, huh. And then there's other ones that take, you know, that you can take a scene in summer and try to make it look winter and yeah, know, all sorts of sorts of crazy stuff. And so, yeah, noise vector is yeah pretty common, but you know, interesting. You can, uh, How did they generate the simulated image? Yeah, so they use a rendering software, just normal rendering software. I think huh. um, Unity, maybe, maybe that's the one. That sounds. I like see. And the goal is by training on these simulated images. So the goal, hmm. So in a normal GAN, if we start with hand real handwritten digits, the goal yep. is to generate images that look like the handwritten digits. So exactly. the goal there is to take in simulated images and make them look more realistic. Exactly. By also adding real images. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, huh. it, yeah, and it's well, anyways, it, it it's pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. This is all great because I think once you understand step by step what's going on with GANs, you can understand these more complicated architectures. It's like, oh, that's just a slight modification to this basic thing. Exactly. Yeah. So Nathaniel, what's missing? Uh, uh <laughs> let me read down below. I don't know. <laughs> what did we do? What did we do? What have we done so far? We've taken a random noise vector, yeah. generated an image. Yes. Taken this image fed it through the discriminator, sure. compared the discriminator's prediction to zero, computed the loss, blah, blah, blah. Sure. And we use that to train the generator. So yep. we're continually fake, generating a fake image, training the discriminator, and using the, the discriminator's generator. loss to train the generator. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, that's good. So we, 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 just, we just keep going until it's fully trained and then we're, we've got a generator that generates lots of real images, right? <laughs> or do we? <laughs> What, what, could, what, what could be wrong? I, 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 can't, okay. I, I can't say anything that's, that's wrong here. Well, hmm. Let's see. Which one of us is going to reveal the right answer? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, right here. Sure. What's going, how do we ever get real images? Oh, man. Yeah, it's we, just going to be trained on all fake images. We're just giving it fake images, and this discriminator is going to get really good at it's saying a, fake images are fake. It's a very easy job to, to discriminate between yeah. zero and zero. Exactly. Okay, so we need some real images. We got to bring in some real images. All right, let's bring in some real images. Okay. Let's say we're, let's say we're doing cats. Okay. So we want to bring in a real image. And here's, again, where just the, the flexibility of neural networks sort of does its magic. We do the same thing. We, we do a slight modification of what we did before. We feed in the real image, mm -hmm. and the discriminator, feed it through the discriminator, the discriminator makes a prediction, but now for every real image, we tell the discriminator, compare the value you're outputting with the value one and compute the loss based on that. Right. And then we use the loss from that to train the discriminator. Hmm. So we are sort of, as the researchers or data scientists, we're telling the, the discriminator, Every time you get a fake image, generate zero. And every time you get a real image, generate one. And we're just, we just make the discriminator smarter that way. Here's, here's a question. Ooh. Uh, so the, how can the generator learn what a real image looks like if it never sees a real image? Well, you know, that's a great question. It's got, it's, that's a great question. It's kind of funky. So. Here's the thing. Yeah. These two neural networks are kind of in a race. Yeah. And they need to be running at the, at the same, they're kind of in a race where they're tied together. Yeah. And they need to be running at the same speed. Yeah. And if one gets way ahead, and how does that work? Well, this discriminator, it's going to see some real images and it's going to get good at saying, okay, this real image, which is a real image, is, is a one. And yeah. this, this other image, which is just random noise, is a zero. Yes. So then every time it sees a fake image and it's gonna, it's gonna see fake images from the generator, it's gonna make predictions like, yeah, this is zero. 
Mm -hmm. And the generator is going to get the message from the discriminator that, oh, the discriminator does not think my images are real at all. Yep. Like, nah. -uh. Um, so I need to adjust my weights. I need to scramble and do everything I can yeah. to make sure that I'm generating images that are better. Yeah. So that's, and that, and it's sort of, I think with all neural networks and deep learning results, with lots and lots of compute power sure. and lots and lots of time, um, and with just the right hyperparameters, this works. Yeah. yeah. So the people in the original paper said it much better than I could. Good fellow at Al, Generative Adversarial Networks 2014 from the original paper, has this famous quote. The generative model can be thought of as analogous to a team of counterfeiters trying to produce fake currency and use it without detection, while the discriminative model is analogous to the police trying to detect the counterfeit currency. Competition in this game drives both teams to improve their methods until the counterfeits are indistinguishable from the genuine articles. Yeah. It's nice, nice concise way of saying it. It's very cool. So, Another way to look at generative adversarial networks is that they're approximating a distribution. So what exactly does that mean? So if you think of all the handwritten digits out there, each handwritten digit is like a 784 dimensional thing. Where did I pull 784 from? Well, it's 28 by 28, 28 mm -hmm. rows, 28 columns. And so each one of those is like a 784 dimensional vector. Yeah. And if you think about this, and this is a little mind bending, but if you think about the space of all those vectors, there's like a distribution for the lightness or dark values of pixel 37 in yeah. that 784 dimensional space. And there's a lightness or darkness value of pixel 725 in that 784 dimensional space. And you can think of generate generative adversarial networks as trying to approximate this distribution. Mm. Now there's a great GitHub repo that's also linked in the notebook that we'll send a uh, link to mm -hmm. that contains code that I just got running here and um, shows a generative adversarial network trying to generate the data from a one dimensional distribution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can see at every step, so, not all images are exactly the same. So here that's simulating that. The real data, the green line, is like the, a real image um, being fed into the discriminator every time. Exactly. And the red line is what the generator is outputting. Yeah, hold, hold the mouse still. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I'll, I'll just move it off there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is really cool. I will actually fast forward a bit. Yeah. We often think of neural nets as sort of doing this like um, trying to find a minimum. And if our learning rate is too high, they can jump around the minimum. They can like miss the bottom of the valley. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool to watch this network try to train because it's actually doing that. You can see yeah. it going from this like yeah. narrow thing. That's very to funny. Out there. It's really, yeah, it's really cool. Um, and then it gets it. You'll, you'll see in a second, it starts to actually nail the real distribution. So it's still screwing up at this point. Um, and, and, and remember the, uh, what, what the discriminator sees is not the full distribution, but they just see values from those distributions. Um, yes. So, so you might think like, well, this is really easy to distinguish between the red line <laughs> right. and, the, and, the, and the green line. But they, remember, they see one number at a time. Oh, there we go. Oh, there wow. we go. See? And then it gets into this pattern. Um, but yeah, it's exactly right. What we're trying to do is trying to have a function that we're trying to train a neural network. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's getting better and better, and I killed it at 5,000 iterations. Sure. And, sure. and there we go. So I'm going to stop sharing that and uh, maybe we'll put this video in the GitHub repo or find a way to share this too. Sure. Yeah. Let's switch um, back over to the, um, yeah. Yeah. The GAN talk. Oh, oh, GANs. Oh, okay. GAN talk. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a cool little demo. Thank you to the guy who uh, put that on GitHub. Um, we'll, we'll send a link to that for sure. Cool. We, that, that we will. All right.
So here's where we're going to get into a little bit of TensorFlow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, more like, oh, no, let's be honest. But uh, <laughs> I'm surprised <laughs> that you use TensorFlow, no, no Keras? You know, oh, pure TensorFlow. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no Keras. Right, t- um, I'm the wimp. <laughs> yeah. I, I should, we should redo this in Keras. Um, that's actually <laughs> be a great exercise. I'm yeah. a little rusty on my actual deep. I've been doing a lot of implementing stuff from scratch. I'm actually pretty rusty on my deep learning frameworks, like my TensorFlow and my Keras and my PyTorch. So that'd yeah. be a good exercise for me. Just yeah, to, could, yeah, could could be, could be. I mean, doing it in TensorFlow is it's always always well, more, of a, more of a challenge. I didn't actually do this, by the way. Um, this okay. is oh. from the Udacity Deep Learning Nano Degree Foundations repository, which has a lot of really good examples and tutorials that you can just run. Oh, they have a GAN uh, one too? Oh yeah, yeah, they have GANs. They have lots of good stuff in there. I'm impressed. I, yeah, I, I was very impressed with their program. Okay, um, cool, cool, cool. Yep. Not to plug Udacity too much or anything. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. There, there's, good, there's good stuff out there. Udacity's Coursera's is also very good and, yeah. and, and all that. All right, cool. So what is TensorFlow? So I think, I think actually a good reason to use TensorFlow or a good reason why it's worth doing some stuff in TensorFlow is because it forces you to think about neural networks a little bit differently in a way that's not better or worse, just different. Mm-hmm. So one way to think about neural networks is these mathematical functions and we're using calculus, the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights, mm-hmm. to adjust the weights at each iteration and mm-hmm. hopefully this function gets better and better as a function approximator. Another way to think of neural networks in terms of how they're actually implemented is as big computational graphs. Yeah. So what does that mean? That means like we have this graph and we have a bunch of little nodes in the graph linked together. So one computation goes into one node, the result of that goes into the next node, and the result of that might go into two nodes, and those two nodes can go into up two other nodes, et cetera. Mm-hmm. At the end of that computational graph, there is a quantity called the loss that's produced. Mm-hmm. And that loss is, we can define that however we want, but there's a loss. And so we can set up a big computational graph and define what is the graph mm-hmm. and what is the loss. And then we can tell TensorFlow, which is really a graph optimization framework. Graph optimization isn't the right way to say it, but a graph computation framework, Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. not even a neural network framework, is we can tell it, hey, just do whatever you have to do in that graph to minimize that loss. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, just just figure it out. And the cool thing with GANs is we can think of the whole framework as one big computational graph. So we can think of a GAN as getting in a fake image, uh, excuse me, a random noise vector and yeah. a real image. Yeah. Random noise vector goes through the generator and the result of the generated thing goes through the discriminator. Yep. The discriminator outputs part of its loss. It outputs a, a loss, which is how different the prediction was from zero. Exactly, yeah. Also, real image comes in, goes right through the discriminator, and the discriminator outputs another loss. Mm. How different the prediction from the discriminator on the real image was from one. So you have two discriminator loss things. Finally, then, you take the discriminator loss on the fake image, feed that back through the generator, and you've got your what you call your generator loss. Three losses. Three losses. What are we going to do? Very interesting. Three yeah, losses. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. the losses always were paired. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. One, the, the generator loss is just alone. It's just on its own. I know. Yeah, we know. Yeah, it's, it's very sad. Um, okay. But okay. Let's, let's see it. Let's see basically, it. But basically, this does that. And I, I, think, it's, I, I think that high-level understanding is really uh, the most important thing here. So what do you actually do in terms of coding this up? Sure. Um, well, there's two steps, really. You define the computational graph. You define what's going to go on when you get in a, a, a random noise vector and yeah. what's going to go on when you get a real image. Yeah. And then you define exactly what your losses are. Yeah. So I'll go through like um, what those are. So here's the generator. Mm-hmm. And this is, again, this should be thought of as part of that computational graph. And what does it do? It gets in, it, it takes in a random noise vector, 
and some other um, arguments, mm -hmm. which are important. And there's some stuff about reusing the variables. And I think that's not the most important thing. The point is, you know, this is a function that takes in a random noise vector and outputs um, some other numbers. Sure. Those don't have to be thought of as anything in particular. We're just setting up a big graph that, that can serve sure, as a sure, sure. Discriminator, same thing, similar kind of thing, takes in this time X, which will represent a real image, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it outputs um, the output of it, and as well as the raw, the output, which has been squashed between zero and one, and just its raw output, which yeah. is gonna be used in the generator. Yeah. yeah these, are, these are pretty small networks. Yeah, this is just, super, so I think also, good, good point. Writing things in this sort of modular way, yeah. the separate generator function and a separate discriminator network uh, or discriminator function lets you see you could put whatever you want inside these functions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These could be big old convolution of things, you know, your resnets, your, mm -hmm. your what have you's. Yeah. Uh, but like the point is, they're just elements in this graph. You got random noise in prediction out or yeah. predicted image out, et cetera, generated image out. Yeah. All right. So got some code here. Um, here's where I think the, it, it gets a little bit interesting. So we generate our model inputs. This is sort of like where the magic happens. We generate our model inputs, mm -hmm. input real, our actual image. Yeah. And our input Z, Z is what they used to denote the random noise vector. Feed input Z through the generator and get this generated output, G model here. Mm -hmm. If you're doing, you know, if you're scoring your GAN and try to figure out how good it is, this G model is what you're gonna end up looking at. Um, then you get multiple quantities out of the discriminator, you get what happens when we run the discriminator when I feed the real image through? Yep. I get some, I get some predictions. And what happens when I feed the generated image through? And I get yep. some predictions. Yeah. That cell is there twice, so I'm going to delete the second version. <laughs> um, and then we get these losses. Yep. So what are the losses? I have the discriminator loss on the real image. Yep. Okay, what do we want that to be conceptually? That means we fed the real image through and we want to compare it to the value one. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. there's a subtle thing here that is one of these weird deep learning tricks with GANs. We don't actually use one as the value we compare yep. it to. We use, oftentimes people will do things like compare it to a value randomly between 0.7 and 1.2 is what yep. I've seen. Here in this super basic example, they're just comparing it to one minus this smoothing factor. Smoothing factor is 0.1, so yeah. we're gonna compare it to 0.9. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And that tends to prevent overfitting or something. Yeah. I, I don't have a good intuition as to why that would prevent overfitting, but. Yeah, it, it, this was, uh, we were talking about this before. I think uh, this was, I don't remember the reason either, but it's in the, the, the the tricks and tips for training GANs, that, that paper. So oh, we can link yeah. the paper down here if you're actually curious about this. Oh, and that paper is an amazing paper. We'll be going into demystifying that paper, hopefully in a future one of these. Yeah, we, it's, it's very fun actually. Yeah, that paper is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is one component of what we're computing. So all of this code is really just saying what's going on. Mm -hmm. The discriminators outputting two things, probability of it being zero and probability, excuse me, probability of it being real, probability of it being fake. Mm -hmm. And we want to, basically this sigmoid cross entropy with logits function. Mm -hmm. You use this function anytime you're outputting probabilities of an image belonging to, let's say one of 10 classes or a thousand classes. Mm -hmm. And the thing you're comparing it to is a vector where it has all zeros except one one because mm -hmm. it'll only belong to one class. And anytime you're using that as your the two things you're comparing, you can use this sigmoid cross entropy with logits function. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's 
computing the cross entropy loss between those two vectors where one of them is a sigmoid. One of them yeah. is going to through a sigmoid. Yeah. So you might see this code and be like, what's going on here? Um, I think it's really important to have the conceptual understanding that what's going on is we're, we want our discriminator to output something close to one for real images. Yeah. Yeah. That should give us an intuition as to what's going on here. Yeah. We have our, uh, oh, and we're storing that in our discriminator loss real. That's our, that's our, that's one part of our loss. What's the next part of our loss? Next part of our loss is we have the fake image that the generator generated. Mm -hmm. We fed that through our discriminator and we want it to output the zero. Yep. So we use this TF zeros like and do that. Yeah. It's, it's somewhat surprising that they don't use the smoothing factor there. You know? It's very odd. Um, yeah. I've seen typically that the smoothing factor is only used on the one and not the zero, which again, just, just, it's just totally bizarre. Um, and we, in a future data talk, uh, and or you can see down below in this notebook, there are some results from the improved techniques on training GANs exactly. paper, where they even say in the paper, we don't know why this works. Yeah, that's right. Um, and that's, and that's uh, this, this field is early days and it's, there's a ton of interest in it. So people are discovering things that they don't understand why they work. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, it's, it's uh, so, Sorry if we can't give you the, the full explanation. Well, well, no, no one knows. No one can, right. Um, all right. So finally, we have the generator loss. So before we get into the code, what's the generator loss? The mm. generator loss is, the descript is we want the discriminator to output, the, the generator wants the discriminator to output one. Mm. It wants to feed a fake image through the discriminator and get the discriminator to say, yep, that's real. So the generator's loss is the difference between whatever the discriminator outputted and one. Hmm. And so that's what this is here. It's the difference between the fake logits. So the probabilities of the image being of the probabilities associated with the fake image and one. Labels are usually like correct answers in yeah, neural networks. Exactly. Exactly. Labels. Yeah, you got it. Um, cool. And then you set up some other stuff here. You basically, uh, so then moving on, like you set up some other stuff here. You set up um, what are the variables that are uh, the, the trainable variables in this yeah. neural network. This is TensorFlow specific stuff. And then again, sort of thinking about neural networks in this way of computational graphs with TensorFlow, you just say, hey, here's this, you define this optimizer object. And yeah. you say, take a learning rate and just do whatever you have to do to change these variables here, yep. the discriminator variables, to minimize this loss. Exactly. So these are like the key lines. This is what we've been building up to. Yeah. Yeah. And then, what do we do? Then we, we have this graph and that's, that's our graph. Um, we then, sort of initialize a TensorFlow session, we initialize our variables, and then we say, well, go through our data. For each data, get a batch of data. Yep. Rescale it, so okay, what's going on here? Our images are between, the, the generator is outputting pixel values between negative one and one. Mm-hmm. We need our real images, therefore, to be between negative one and one. Otherwise, our yeah. neural network will be super confused. Yeah. Actually, our neural network won't be confused at all. <laughs> it will just think that if an image is between zero and one, it's real. And if it's between yeah. negative one and one, it's fake. Exactly. Um, all right. So we do that. And then here's the real sort of key lines. You take this session object you've initialized and you run for one iteration, this optimizer feeding in to the graph on this iteration, yep. the batch of image, the batch of real images mm -hmm. and the fake batch here. Yep. And then you do, and then you get two losses. You get the, well, you really get, you get the two discriminator losses. Exactly. Um, use those and, change variables as you need to. 
That's what this line tells us. Change variables as you need to, to mm -hmm. reduce those losses. Yep. And then right here, we do the same thing for the generator. Feed in this fake batch. Yep. Uh, run it through the whole uh, computational graph mm -hmm. and do what you got to do to change all the generator variables to reduce what we defined as the generator loss. Exactly, exactly. Which is the exact opposite of the discriminator or one part of the discriminator loss. Exactly, which is one part of the discriminator loss. Are we, are we gonna, we're gonna live run this? I think you're, you're missing a couple. Try, of yeah, I live. probably forgot to run some cells. I think, yeah, I think starting with, yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, we'll just shift enter until things start to happen. Oh, All right, man. come on, C, come on CPU. <laughs> yeah, I was right? gonna say like, there we go. Better be, it's better be attached to like a GPU on the back. Oh, it's, oh, it's not. Oh, it's well, not. You know. And we got some epochs, here we go. Yeah, um, it's, it's, and it's gonna run. <laughs> It's gonna, it's, it'll run. Um, we could maybe come up with a cooler demo, a GPU based demo um, yeah. the, for, the, for next time for sure. The loss in this case is the uh, cross entropy loss. This is not, we're not looking at accuracy. Good call. Um, this is just cross entropy loss. And the interesting thing is with GANs, you don't necessarily see the loss going down mm -hmm. because these yeah. networks are actually competing with each other the loss doesn't actually tell you much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, maybe we weren't that intelligent to just print the loss here. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, the, you're, you're looking for a discriminator loss of around 0.5, right? Um, I'm not sure. Or, sorry. And sure, actually. Accuracy, that's discriminator right. accuracy around 0.5. Yes. 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 Um, is that right? I mean, when the discriminator doesn't know at all, that's actually a good question. I think, I think your question is this, when the discriminator, well, you, you actually really, what you really care about is the generator produces images and the discriminator takes its images and says, yep, it's real. Yep. But to your point, actually, I'm surprised, I don't know the answer. I'm surprised that I've never seen the answer to the following question. Once a GAN has been trained yeah. and the generator generates images, what kind of probabilities is the discriminator outputting? Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it would just be like I don't know, like fifty fifty. I you you're probably right, um, but I don't know. I've never actually seen that result. Yeah. The um, you know, a good way that we could do this is go ahead and feed in real images to the discriminator uh, as the fake ones, and real images as the real ones, right? Yep. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it, then it hopefully should be fifty fifty, right? Yeah. Or else. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's a way, I know how to do it in PyTorch, but I know there's a way to um, print out, the, well, we could print out the logits essentially. Yeah, 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 we could, we could, right. And then the logits should be equivalent, right? Or we could just take the sigmoid of them. And... Yeah, yeah. Um, the logits are, have already been, sig well, whichever one of these has already been sigmoided, we exactly. could print those out and exactly, they should be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Exactly. Um, exactly. It'd be interesting. And actually, we'd want D-logits fake, so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think though, well, we can hypothesize all day, but I think it would have to be something close to one that the discriminator is outputting because it's consistently outputting zero, uh, excuse me, it would be outputting one for the real images. Mm -hmm. So actually, I could almost see it outputting, hmm. It seems like, yeah, maybe it is 50-50, I don't know. I trust you on that. <laughs> for, for next data talks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I feel like we've proposed at least five data talks. I, yeah, I feel like this is gonna be, it's gonna be a long running series. Yeah, well, so here's, here's the thing, right? I think um, uh, this, this kind of fits within the data talks thing. It kind of doesn't fit within the data talks thing. Yeah. If you, so, nah. I think, um, I think, you know, it depends what audience what the audience cares about and, and what you're interested in doing, you know, like this is getting more technical. Um, it's getting more exploratory. Well, and you know, and you know, yeah, yeah I, I, you know, this might sort of fit into its own series, you know, it, which, which is sort of like not, not data talks, but kind of like, like let's define deep learning. Let's, or let's, let's teach Nate things. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I want to do a one where let's teach Seth things. Like, can we do that? Yeah. You got to start your own channel. <laughs> oh, damn it.
the, the benefit. I guess the Teach Set Things channel is data talks, right? Like I just well, watch videos and learn things. So I, I guess, I guess. Well, I knew, you know, we could, we could do a classic data talks, you know. Yeah, the Teach Set Things is really like private tutoring, but it's videoed. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, anyways, I, 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 lo I love the format of this because I cool. just get to go in and ask questions. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and you're making me think about a lot of awesome things. So. No, well, yeah. All right. I think let's yeah let's go ahead and just check it out you know we can we can just um stop it at, at 40 yeah yeah we need to okay cool the losses we can do some samples um oh the pickle know, didn't did it not generate oh i can just change the number of epochs all right let's just run it for 10 see what happens and we will we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fade away for a little bit and cut to the to the good stuff Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, the samples won't be very good, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, not, not after 10, unfortunately. Not after 10 months, no. Oh man, so we could cover this stuff. Let's see. The code, the code's getting a little heavy, is all I'd say. <laughs> That's... Yeah, it is. Um, it really is, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, no need to, to get in the nitty gritties of the code. But the other stuff, I'd say, yeah, we, we can do it. And what I, what I will probably do, well, well, it depends. I mean, yeah, I, I wonder if we should break this up into two, you know, actually, because this is going to be like two and a half hours long if we. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely shouldn't keep going. I, I was thinking almost like after this, we cut out today and we're just like, Perfect. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. This, this, and, is, this uh, is a pretty nice breaking point too. So exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I hope people. Yeah, and I'm happy to help with whatever. I feel like we should put um, in the YouTube description like GAN explanation starts here, like X starts here. You know what I mean? So oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, is the, are those the actual samples? Yeah. So we've got the actual samples back after ten epochs. Wow. And you can already see that it's not generating random noise, which it would yeah. be generating at first, literally random noise. Yeah. It figured out that the backgrounds tend to be black. Yeah. It's figured out digits form sort of an oval-like shape yeah. in the middle. Yeah. So it's already, you can already see how compared to totally random images, yeah. these could fool a really dumb discriminator and be like, yeah, that's a digit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, it looks, yeah. It's right. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's got the, it's, it looks like a digit, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, I mean, take, take a seven or a three, but you know. squinch, squinch your eyes, squinch your eyes, and then you're like. Exactly, oh, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. That's basically what discriminators do. They're, oh, check it out. Okay. Epoch one. Terrible. Generators generating. Epoch two, epoch three, et cetera, all the way up to epoch 10. Looks nice. Looks real nice. There you go. So you can see you can see what's going on there, and we can save stuff, and uh, and that's that. Okay. So, 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 Nate, so what what should what what are the important takeaways here? The important takeaways, I hope, are you should have a good mental model for how GANs work at a low level, other than just they generate images. Yeah. So you should understand that. This noise vector gets fed into a generator that generates a fake image, and then we feed that fake image into a discriminator, and that yep. discriminator tries to output zero. Or we yep. tell the discriminator, when you get a fake image, output zero. Yeah. Then we feed a real image in, feed that through the discriminator, and the discriminator, we tell the discriminator, you need to output one. Yep. Finally, we feed one minus whatever the discriminator outputted for the fake image. So if it said 0.1 probability of being real, then yeah. we feed 0.9 back as the loss for the generator. And the generator tries to get the discriminator's prediction as high as possible. So at a low level, that's what's going on. At a slightly higher level, it's these two neural networks racing, making each other smarter as they both learn. Um, and you can see visually here that amazingly, with all deep learning stuff, uh, this process just, just kind of works. So, so this, this conclusively proves that competition leads to better results, right? Um, in this <laughs> context, competition leads to better results, Nathaniel. Right. right. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
I mean, I think there's other evidence that competition leads to better results in other domains. Sure. Uh, that's probably a discussion for not a data talk. Uh, most likely not a data talk. Yes. yes. Uh, 30 minutes later, we're talking about the free market. No. Yeah, um, bring, bring biologists in, you know. Oh yeah, right, exactly. Right. <laughs> you know? um, post your thoughts to the comments, people. Yeah, just not, just not, not, on, not on competition stuff. No yes, please post any questions you have. Please, um, please do. Okay, and, what are, and finally, what are we going to be going over next time? Next time, we're going to be, so this was just three and a half years ago. And next time I'd say we're gonna be covering a lot of what people have learned about GANs in the last three and a half years. Awesome. So just after this paper was published, well, about a year after, there were results using deep convolutional architectures yeah. to do GANs and some really cool results came from that. And then we'll be covering some, uh, some of the mathematical tricks that were used, yeah. um, actually quite simple and elegant to get yeah. GANs to work a lot better. And then we'll be covering uh, some results from this incredible paper from 2016 called Improved Techniques for Trading GANs. Yeah, and which, which we both randomly found that we both loved. It was, it was yeah, awesome. yeah. Um, so so we, hope, we hope you love it too. It's, I, and we hope that we can take some of the complicated ideas from it and just make them like simple and clear. Okay. Okay, um, so thank all of you for watching. You know, if you liked the video, please give it a nice thumbs up. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment them down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, then you're either a bad person or you're just waiting to click that button. So click the button. Um, okay, so thanks from both Nate and Seth, and we'll yep. see you next time. Thanks everyone, bye.